That was what I was riding the night, or afternoon, evening, that Mr. Borba was winning an Olympic gold in, in Barcelona on my shiny bicycle. That, that was in 1980. I was down the Bungie bypass, slightly faster than he was riding around the other <laughs> in Barcelona. A chain case. And again, the structure, there's nothing on the other side, that's the structure of the bike. That aerodynamically is one mile an hour. Goodness. If you want to go a mile an hour faster, you can okay. do what that bike's done. Oh, this is valuable information here, yeah, ladies well, and gentlemen. Like Pass it on a British cycling, you've taken no notice whatsoever. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, it's safe to say, I think you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the Velo Ads YouTube channel. I'm at Mike Burroughs' workshop. Mike Burroughs, if you don't know, is a famous bicycle designer and an engineer and a good friend. We've raced together for quite a few years and hanged out and drunk a lot of beer together. It's a miserable day. Theo's running around in the rain, absolutely having the time of his life. Here we are in Mike's workshop. Come on in. Here's the man himself, legendary bicycle designer and engineer. One of the best, the best, I always say. <laughs> Stuart always says, one of the best. <laughs> the only one, there's nobody else out there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is, I think, my, in total, my sixth workshop. I, I started in, in garage at the bottom of the garden. Yeah. Whatever, and the, uh -huh. the, the nice old mill here, the mill walking. That's, so that's your original. That's the original mill, that's one year older than I am. That, that was <laughs> April 42 in mill walking. That, that's first day, mine. Wow. Model Milwaukee, look at that. HL swivel head vertical. A lovely, lovely machine. So that got me going in the garage. Uh huh. With the single phase motor in it. And still still working fine to yeah, this day. Yeah, still, still running fine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I started the garage and moved out to this is Ratcliffe Industrial Estate. Moved here. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine who I had worked with in packaging, he was setting up his own business making packaging machines, sort of thing that put crisps in packets, sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and he put me in a corner of his workshop to do his machining for him on his packaging machines. We then ended up going into partnership, making our own packaging machine, which I designed, and that, that's the original of the, the Compact, which became Compact Robot, that's for the name. Wow. And we ended up packing money, all the money. Every coin you've ever had in your pocket has gone through one of our machines. Every <laughs> bank, every major bank, wow. London Transport, Telecom, Post Office, even the Seven Bridge had one of their packaging machines putting, putting money in. That's phenomenal. <laughs> We did quite nicely out of that. And in the middle of all of that, Mr. Borman ended up winning a gold medal on one of my bicycles. Yeah. The famous uh, Lotus machine. That, that, that then suddenly made me very, very famous for 15 minutes. That then got me a job with Giant mm -hmm. Bicycle. So my partner and I sort of split the company, as it were. So we got I, yeah. I left with my share. I moved each. in here, I think, in 95, because I started Giant 94. Mm -hmm. and, and then by 95, this is built. So this, I've been here, so I see all of my Giant career. And then in end of 2000, I, I sort of had enough of Giant. Not, not enough of Giant, but... Yeah. Like, the frustration of designing bikes for the mainstream cycling world was a you you, you weren't allowed to use much imagination because they had to be all pretty much the same the uci were banning all the racing bikes and, mm -hmm. and giant weren't able to make the city bikes because the components didn't exist to, yeah. to make city bikes or whatever so i mm -hmm. quit with them started making the rat catcher as it was. punch it chewy as a way yeah. of trying to earn a living, which turned out not to be a very good way to earn a living at all. So no, yeah. Because by then the recumbent scene had picked up so much, there were lots of companies making them, you know, properly, mm -hmm. commercially, whatever, you could yeah. buy them in shops. So I suppose in the days of the Speedy, there was only me, and you had to come to Rackley if you wanted a Speedy. Yeah. Sort of thing, but that had changed. So 
and then along came the A freight, and then yeah. that was sort of a, a made originally for made Andy to do window cleaning with, mm-hmm. and then took it down to, to bike fix, and then for the, the couriers to see it, I thought, yeah, brilliant. Idea. Yeah, so it took off. Yeah, and I'm making, uh, I think I made about a hundred in the end, whatever wow. sort of thing. And there, that's was, no mean feat, you know, yeah, on your own. I did obviously a, a team on the estate. The welding was done by Stuart around the corner, sort of mm-hmm. thing, and he ended up with the prototype. He ended up using that himself, which was sort of thing. Uh, the bending done around the corner as well. I did all the machining, and the, again, even the painting. There's a powder coat was on the estate, so we got the mm-hmm. painting done here. I mean, nice little local product. Uh, and the nicest customers I've ever had. Yes. Because they weren't looking at their reflections in shop windows. Okay, they yeah. just wanted a bike to do a job. It's sort yeah. of thing. It, it, it pretty much they is. were coming to see you it, because it, that's what they wanted. Not. It, it, it was. It is a lovely bike. Whatever. It turned out not to be quite up to the sort of abuse the couriers heard mm-hmm. about them. Whatever sort of thing. So yeah. there was a bit of cracking. More of a thoroughbred. Whatever. You had to be a little bit of tender, loving care. Yeah. There. But in the end, a partner came along, and they're now being made in Taiwan mm-hmm. uh, in, in smallish numbers at the moment. Uh, and then they're a lot beefier. Taiwan has access to yeah. better materials and testing and everything, so they're, they're actually doing a much better job okay. than they ever could. So yeah. they're still out there. And I'm now, in, in that sense, semi-retired. When I'm 77, mm-hmm. I'm entitled to yeah. be semi-retired. I think, I think, so, you've, I think you've earned your badge. So, <laughs> I can't make the fastest bike in the world. I've had another go at the slowest bike in the world. Excellent. This is, that looks right up my street. This is an easy V. Fantastic. This Let's wheel out. And then this is something I've tried to do several times. Giant actually commissioned me to make the first one, which is basically it's, just, it's, a, it's a little town recumbent. Now, as, as a long-term builder and racer of recumbents, there's no point in building this bike because what this does is what bicycles do perfectly well. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the safety bike. It functions wonderfully if you don't want to go very far or very fast. Now, this is so upright, it can't go very far or very fast. It's no more comfortable than a bike, but it's sort of quite... It's a bit of fun if you want something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Say this, this is a, was a third attempt at it. And this one has got the again front wheel back, so you, there is a certain overlap. But by using short cranks and a, quite a wide Q factor, you can get round a reasonably tight corner without touching. Okay. So the, there might be some justification in it. Easy I can't beat. see me ever making any more of them, but it was a little bit of fun just to be doing while I was waiting for my. Shiny body shell what to be made. What size is your little chain ring there? Just a little ring, whatever. Yep. And obviously, should 140 crank, so that. Lovely. So, and again, this is just sort of it's an easy start. Oh, lovely. It works quite well. It's slow speeds as well. Tight. Just, just touch there. That's just sort of your, your limit of usability. So that's sort of you know within reason. And the I like it. And that sort of reasonably comfortable, whatever sort of thing. So I think there's, there's some potential there, but it's very it's, minimal. It's, it's just a niche. It's not going to sort of transform either recumbents mm-hmm. or, or town cycling, but it, it's safe and fun to use. So it just and so it kept me busy. You've just got the brake on the front. Yeah, at the with, moment, it's just the, just the on one the brake in the gear. It's not, not, it's not technically legal just yet. I'm not sure it'll ever get off the estate, to be honest. Yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah. Well, I hope so. It is handy for running around the estate, that's for sure. Yeah, sort of thing. Great on um, uh, it might be a little bit too short for me, because it my probably daddy, will be, daddy yeah. long legs. Maybe sort of knees might well hit the handle. Seats, good the angle of the seats, all right, actually. Well, Keeps all, the, uh, idea of all your tickle tackle out of the way. <laughs> Ready, Maggie? This is Ready. Uh, the, the inaugural ride on the Easy B. Lucky I'm a recumbent <laughs> professional. <laughs> Oh, oh that's nice, Mike. I like that. Yes. Oh, it's very stable as well. Need one of these for London. Oh, the wheel, the front wheel's fine. The clearance is okay. a few more than just one. It's lovely. Yeah, Stuart rode one of the earlier ones and thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It's just the chain yeah. on the tyre when you turn. Like your, the chain guard bit stops it moving out of the way. It just, just in fine tuning whatever with the same. It's got the wrong, it's just bits that were laying around in the workshop that's got the wrong block on obviously. 
an amazing machine. I mean, it's safe to say, I think you've done it again. Lovely. Yes, that's the whole principle of sort of. That's the only German recumbent we're using saddles at the bottom, as it were. So it seemed to make sense. Yeah. You know, with a, a backrest. <clears throat> and it's something I never really quite cracked, but that, that's sort of as, as good as I've done so far. That's drum brake on the front. Yeah. Again, it's just bits that were laying around. It's all recycled. The monoblade was off something else. And, well, I've got lots of bits lying around. I don't think I could make. Any <laughs> <of it. laughs> Oh well, this, yeah, that was back in the days when I was. It's an old lightweight one. Oh, okay, just drill them out. A little Brompton tire on there on the front, 16 inch. Yeah. Lovely. Well, if anybody wants one, you know who to contact. <laughs> yeah, not, not <laughs> me. <Most> like that. <laughs> no, no. Oh, this is this is the the price point version of Andrew Sidwell's Cadillac. Oh yes. And this, this has got this has got a boot to go with it. To go on the back, but these days I don't run the boot because there's no need, is there really? No need, it's just a trade training bike, whatever. So th that's my sort of serious trainer. Yeah. That's Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's 27 miles flat out, so then a five mile warm down as it were, oh, and loop round as it were. Goodness. Sort of But then if the, if the weather's not so good, if it looks like it might rain or, or if the road is wet, then it's the rat catcher. Uh-huh. Which is that one. That's the regular one. Is that the disc, disc set up in the front? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my, my, my regular touring bike, of course, whatever, but then this gets used as a, a training run. Yep. My favourite machine this ever. Nice, but it, I, I, I treated myself to this. Oh, This is... Rat catcher black. This is wow. the all carbon fibre version of the other one. So, so we take this one outside. Yeah, yeah. Can, all all in the carbon. Light. Beautiful. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first all carbon fibre rat catcher nine. Look at this, Stuart. That was literally just a treat to myself for one off. Stunning. That's carbon over foam. And that would, that would be a lot more expensive than the standard oh, one. Oh, yeah, but it's, it's not a reproducible process, that's the problem. There's rather too much tender, loving care and everything sort of thing, but... Uh, <clears throat> wow. How much does this one weigh, Mike? It's about two and a half kilos less than a regular rat catcher. Wow. Which is a, a nice reduction. There's a frustrating thing is, because on a recumbent you don't notice the weight quite like you do a normal bud, because yeah. you're sitting there like a sack of potatoes, you yeah. don't have that I instant feel, but obviously it is it's nicer and faster and sharper. What do you think? Oh, I can feel the difference straight away just oh, yeah. by doing that from my old one. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so much lighter. Yeah. Goodness me. Oh, I like the, the blade there. Yes, carbon monoblade. Hold up. Oh, so the red wire, what's that for? The red wire running down here, like an electrical... Computer. Oh, it's for the computer. I thought you had some newfangled electronic shifting device on there or something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's set, uh, the seat, there. there's no adjustment there. No you, adjustment, you no, just set obviously it. I've been riding a rack actually long enough to know... Yeah, where you need it. Fantastic. Wow. This bike has blown my mind. I've never seen a full carbon rat catcher, ever. I see you've got a rim brake on the back. Yeah, just, I, just, I, don't, I just don't need the weight of a disc brake on the back, yeah. do I? Thought. Yeah, just... One of the nice things is that the foam core is, is rower cell foam. Now that's the really high-tech Formula One yeah, aerospace oh, foam. Okay. Which luckily the local sockets is just around the corner. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> and I can go and scrounge off cuts. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, that's handy. It is. Because so then you get them really cheap as well. I get them for free. <laughs> I get very, very expensive foam for nothing. Oh, oh it's a shame there's no pedals on it, Magda. I'd love to ride this. This bike is the exact same model except for the carbon fibre. I had an aluminium tube one that I rode to Norway from London. 
and back. Well, not back, but I rode up to Lillehammer. Well, Lillehammer, we went all the way up to <laughs> Trondheim or wherever. I can't even remember now, it was cold. Don't do it. Don't go in the winter. <laughs> Right, let's put this back and we'll see what else we can get out of it. Yeah. I'm like a kid in a candy shop here. It's starting to rain again. Right, let's fill that in. Lovely. And as you can see here on the left, Magda, as you can see here on the left, that's the exact same bike that I used on that trip. And I had that one for eight years. But I didn't have disc brakes, I had drums on the rear, and that's the rat catcher with the Hope brake set up with the discs. Okay, so what do we have here, Mike? This is one of my last attempts to save the world. This is yeah. This is 2D, mm -hmm. as, as in two-dimensional, which I can demonstrate, because the handlebars can do that. And originally had some of the MKS, was it pull-off pedals? You can yeah. Re because so I'd, I'd made this so originally as a folding bike. Because the one I'd done with Giant wasn't really quite right. I thought I'll, I'll make a nice folding bike. But then I stayed in London actually with Stuart from Bike Fix and realised mm -hmm. what, what the bike needed wasn't to fold, was to be thin. Mm -hmm. Because it was sort of stuck in lots of spaces. So it was converted into a, a thin bike. And I made, and again, ideally for London, it's single speed. Yep. This is a fixed version, but the original one had drum front and rear uh, and enclosed. Wheel. It's all right. enclosed chain uh, it a transmission. It's, 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 drive. That's the structure. It's, it's, it's a, tra it's a ah. chain plus structure. You've got nothing else but that. That's uh, which is the, the that's ingenious. That's the I mean, I was trying to get th this was the idea that Giant were going to produce sort of you know the city bike of the future, but we couldn't get anybody to manufacture gears to go inside it, but I worked out central London doesn't need gears. It's, no. it's flat, so anyone commuting around London have a nice little bike. And because you can't leave anything chained up in London, it'll get nicked. This, by being 2D, could go in the office and the chain inside, there's no oil or dirt, whatever. It's the perfect it's little city bike. the wall in the office. Unfortunately, there was so much work in making it, because it had mud guards and everything, and there was more work in the mud guards, you know, because it wasn't really productionized, whatever sort of thing. It, it, I, I made three or four for friends in the end, and, mm -hmm. and uh, left it at that. And this is sort of, the, this, is, this is what was the original folding bike, which is sort of converted back and just, bodged up a little bit as it and say this is fixed and it's a, it's a lovely little town hack it's a beautiful little bike to ride around on but so sadly it, it was not for me i mean the, the carbon chain case was costing me 300 pounds to have molded and this was a few years ago now because okay it's pre-preg and it's a quite a complicated job but this is the bike that should be well, in fact that we'll go to the, the, the upgraded version but the, the giant marketing understood it they realized there was a, a world mm -hmm. market for it yeah a single sided so if you get a puncture you can peel the tire off whatever you don't need to take it apart the chain is in a chain case running in oil your trousers mm -hmm. aren't whatever that, that's what everybody wanted but even giant with all their clout yeah. couldn't get anybody to come on board and make the components that, that, that wow. was needed wow. was terribly sad it's a shame and of course it finally led to the very shiny version oh this is gordon gordon so blimey I got, <laughs> I got onto a, i'll turn it around i got onto a a train theme off the back of the oak freight, which is a, a shorthand for a, lo a locomotive. And Gordon is obviously another sort of locomotive from a uh -huh. different world, but beautiful. Uh, and this is the bike that Giant couldn't make. This is in here is the pinion gearbox, so ah. you've got a nine, nine speed bottom bracket gearbox. Wow, structural chain case. And that's it, that is the, this is the ultimate, well it's the ultimate hire bike as well, because it's relatively expensive to make, it's got zero maintenance, Yeah. whatever sort of thing, this could be mass produced. Not as heavy as one of those uh, Boris bikes, quite, quite, quite 59 sort of kilograms or whatever exactly they Exactly whatever, so this is not, I mean it's carbon fibre frame, but that now, with mainland China production costs being what they are, you know, you could produce these, you know, very not very low cost but not high cost this could be wow, reproduced very this. Well. but they say this isn't just my own personal shiny version but they say the the grip shift system bars again molded that's how the carbon over foam comes out and then the frame was made the same way but just lots of sanding and painting to make it sh shiny but I, I left those like it because it just feels nice it's a lovely texture to sort of hold yeah. on to when you're riding Beautiful. Beautiful. It's only fault is it's so shiny you can't actually leave it anywhere, even in Norfolk. <laughs> so oh, it would be gone so in a flash. It doesn't get that. And much it's use. a one-off. It's a one-off. It, so it, it, don't it's... ever leave it anywhere. No. no. So 
That would be tragic. So that is my sort of current pride and joy, whatever sort of thing. But to say so, beautiful doesn't get the amount of usage that it deserves. But again, you know, this could go into production tomorrow with a company like Giant. You know, yeah. if the pinion gearbox was productionized, as it were, you know, could yeah. come down in cost. Beautiful. That's all machine. reproducible as a sort of the, the, the perfect city boy. And when we show the prototypes in the Netherlands, you know, to customers, because I, I knocked out a couple of sort of not so shiny versions when I was with Giant, and the customer base, yeah, just wanted them. They understood wow. the benefits of, of not having to take a wheel out of the frame for a puncture and just with a Dutch bike with the chain case, it's impossible. Lovely. So that's, that's the answer to the world's commuting problems, which the world's not going to get just yet. Such a pity, it should be everywhere, this thing. This is, uh, and to my right we have uh, the book. Oh, yeah, this is, this is a, this is, we've, we've only got 200 left, so... <laughs> so you printed a, a yeah. thousand. And uh, I've got a copy of this at home, yeah. signed by Mike. Is that right? From Bicycle to Superbike, yeah. Tony Hadland and Mike Burrows. So if, if you buy all of these, then we'll get a second edition with the Super Dragon in it. So there we go. How can people order? From well, Tony Hadland, it's a hadland.net.co or something, whatever, online. Okay. T Tony takes the orders in, I, I ship them out from here. Okay. That's it. Or through the club, the BHPC. Yeah, ah, they'll, so they'll order there. And I think BHPC, you automatically get a signed version, as it were. So Brilliant. Thing. Okay, so if you do want a signed copy, signed you copy. can get it through, through the BHPC, British Human Power Club, online. Yeah. That's the one. Fantastic. Yeah. And these are the very, very shiny bicycles. Oh, now we're into the, the realm of special. Very special. <laughs> so this is... The Hammer's to... bike, that was what I was commissioned to do when I got the job with Giant. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the, sort of the, the road going version of, of the Lotus bike, if you like. That was my okay. interpretation of, of how to make a usable version. And Giant wanted sort of you know, an image product to, to take, take them from being sort of, you know, a, a Taiwanese price point company to a, a leading company. And uh, it, it helped to do that along with the, the TCR, the compact road. Mm -hmm. And we loaned one of these Frags, I think it was an on painter because the first ones are made in the UK. Okay. Uh, DPS and the Surrey mm -hmm. had made the early uh, production Lotus bikes as well. They made this one and some of the early ones for Giant. And we loaned one to Andy Wilkinson, who was one of Chris Borman's old club mates. And he set four British national records. He'd mm. never held a time to a record in his life. He got the 50, the 100, and the 12 air one year, and the 24 Goodness air the next me. year. And wow. Giant very cleverly avoided putting any adverts in the cycling magazine to let people know this. <laughs> <laughs> Marketing was not their strong point. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, yeah. But that is a very pretty and quite effective road bike. And of course, banned by the UCI in 2000. And why did they, they ban it then? Very stupid people. Why did they ban it? Because they're stupid people and yeah. there's no other logical answer. Yeah. They weren't at the pay of anybody or anything. It's just no, to nobody's interests. It's a work of art, Mike. It's quite nice. Well, again, my father made the original wooden patterns, and my father was, had been a pattern maker at the Havon Aircraft Company. Okay. And so I would come up with the idea, sketch it out. He would then make the wooden pattern. Mike Nelthorpe did the prototypes, mm -hmm. did the very first one. Okay. And then that was my first bike with Giant, uh, and this alongside a convenient was my last bike with Giant. I was actually commissioned to produce that for when we were sponsoring the Spanish Onfe team. Okay. This was for Abraham Milano to go for the hour record before the UCI ban on, on monocot bicycles came into place. Did he actually ride this? He never did. In the end, he didn't bother going for it, whatever. But I then used this as my time trial bike. And this is the bicycle that makes a Lotus bike seem like a bicycle. Okay. My personal best had been a 5930 for 25 mile time trial. Wow. And on this, and this was in my giant days and not doing that much training, I did a 57.11 and, and a 22 minute 10. Wow. It absolutely flew. And the reason is, yes, is the recumbent here has the same feature. What on this bike is very old fashioned. There's something on this bike that old fashioned bicycles have and my shopping bikes have. A chain case. And again, the structure, there's nothing on the other side. That's the structure of the bike. That aerodynamically is one mile an hour. Goodness. I know right, it. a chain case. Right, now, interestingly, I wonder, because the, the recumbent has it as well, chain inside. Yeah. I, I won the first race in class with that when I, this is the Michelin book of the Michelin man, and has an index. So I wondered when I won that race, was that the first time somebody with a chain case 
won a bicycle race. No. Charles Theron, 1889, inaugural Paris, Brest, Paris. Now, they flipped the f picture there for some reason, but it had a chain case, right? Now, for dust and dirt. Mm. Interestingly, the publicity shot, they'd removed the chain case because it looked a bit naff. Racing bikes didn't have chain cases, yeah, did like they? City bike. Yeah, but this is it. That's the first time a race was won with a chain case but again he didn't un appreciate the aerodynamic benefits of it yeah. or he wouldn't have been sitting up right on his so that's car. worth one mile an hour yeah now it'll be interesting to see how the uci tried to ban chain cases it's not exactly <laughs> innovative okay no. <laughs> we've got prior art from 1889 for christ's sake oh, this is beautiful isn't it anyway so that is the nicest shiniest fastest upright bicycle in the world bar none by an order of magnitude wow and of course my famous giant plastic spoke front wheel yeah which again is sort of a good compromise between sort of the rideability of a regular spoke wheel and the aerodynamics of the tri spoke that's not much affected by crosswinds tri spokes are a bit yeah wow, and again this is obviously this is molded locally by hq fiber again who do all my work aero crank set and this is still on longish track because these days, of course, all of my bikes are on short cranks. What do you run now? One four. One, one forty on the laid back and one four five on the uprights. Mm -hmm. This is still one six five era. And that was safe. Was this what I was, I was while I worked for Giant? I raced time trials rather than recumbents. Mm -hmm. It made sense because I'm designing yeah. bikes for a living rather than a uh -huh. hobby, as it were. It's after I left them end of two thousand, I got back on the, the recumbent racing. Rat Racer Mark 10, Rat Racer X, as it suggests, and if you see in the book, I've done 10 variations on the Rat Racer theme, each one getting lower and faster, and quite frankly, nastier. <laughs> <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to do it from the top of the, uh, the hoop at the back, steer it from that, that's how it's to steer mine. That rollover hoop, just hold it one hand on top of there and lean it where you want to go. So then if you get the hang of that, it's just one-handed then. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Up, 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 up. Oh, By now, yeah. it is 60 minutes plus one lap. The clock will be set to 12 noon. Was this the fly-by-wire one? This is not, this, oh yeah, they're all fly-by-wire fly for some, you can't, it's all inside here, but the steering is sort of rather remote from the front wheel and mm -hmm. the geometry is a bit strange and you're very low and it's very nasty. And this is a view uh, from the It is not a shopping bike, this is not at all like <laughs> the 8th race ride, so I think, but I can win races and win my elderly body, that's a remarkable thing. Yeah. Sort of thing. And again, from the front end you see, inside this lot here is a six-speed derailleur gear. Ah, homemade. It changes gear, but it changes gear very badly. This is really pre Shimano days, but it is very, it's the same fine pitch chain that you saw on the, the Rat Racer. Sorry, the Rat Racer, the, uh, the Soup Dragon. Mm -hmm. Very small pitch chain with homemade shifting mechanism, which shifts gear very badly. But it is very efficient, and it's front, there's a chain down inside the, the hollow monoblade. Front oh, wheel drive. The chain's in there. Front wheel drive. Front wheel drive. And this is the third in a series with the chain inside. This is the sort of, and again, that, that really gave it an enormous advantage over the likes of Mr. Sidwell, who'd been beating me at the time. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Because I thought she sold him one of my early ones. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Cadillac was, the Cadillac was the last of the nice to ride version. I suppose it gives you motivation. Once you sell him your fastest bike, oh, you I think, oh, make a faster one. Yes. <laughs> Sort of the idea it mostly worked out brilliant yeah so i'm quite proud of this one again but as i say it, it, it's you wouldn't jump on it and say gosh that's a lovely bike no <laughs> no once you're on the track it comes to life and, and makes is, sense it's crossed a lot of skin over the years yeah i think i've seen a few of those crashes tell people if you're thinking of taking up cycle racing what you need to understand there is no if there's yeah. how often and how hard <laughs> yeah. how much skin are you going and to in lose my case, that's, is it both, both wrists, both collarbones, half a dozen ribs, a concussion, a femur, and I can recommend not breaking femurs. No, no, bad. And by now I must have peeled enough skin off to paper the spare bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly not nice, but you sort of... That's why your skin's so thin, regrown oh, skin is uh, like paper. Re re recycled. <laughs> recycled. <laughs> Body's just given up now, you're not having any more, you've used well, up your quota. There's no <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so right. One for the traditionalists out there, okay? And this, uh, yes. Nothing against steel tubing, it's wonderful stuff. And, uh, this is how we used to work. This is not 531, this is actually issue water 017, which is slightly, slightly light, I recall. This was my 1981 best bicycle in the world. And this, as you can see, has a split seat tube. Now, I invented the split seat tube, mm -hmm. possibly for only the seventh time. <laughs> what I didn't really? realise at the time, it had been done many, many times yeah. over the years. And it allows you to get this super short wheelbase. Now, mine is even shorter than normal, because you can see the bottom bracket shell is cut away. So the wheel runs inside the bottom bracket shell. Now, <laughs> wow! No one has made shorter, to <laughs> my knowledge. That is a short. That's now, a... the irony was, despite all this ultra short, this ultra short, that fake mm -hmm. paper clearages, it was like riding a bicycle. Really? Fact, this is the one I rode in in the twelve hour time trial. I did mm -hmm. two hundred and forty seven miles. No, two hundred and forty three point four seven oh miles wow. in twelve hours. In the local time, I've got, got my club record, mm -hmm. um, which is quite pleasing. You just have a pump along the top tube there, so that was aero, early aero bottle, whatever sort of thing. And again, just the first hints of aerodynamics. I mean, this is a the proper cam profile here. You've got this sort of chopped off tail, like, like your, your Porsche whale tail, which they're slowly getting around to doing, but very badly at the moment, of course, because the people who make bikes don't really understand. And even a semi-aero seat post. I think the, the last but one steel bicycle I actually made, whatever sort of thing. But mm -hmm. it's, it's always a very nice bike to ride. A friend borrowed it and, and won a Divisional Champs road race on it. It, it was, a, it was a, a useful all-round bike. And how old is this machine? 81. Wow. I think I've seen this in one of your books. Yeah, it's, 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 all the stuff's in the book. And I say this is one of the, you know, as a classic road bike goes, it is a lovely bike. Mm -hmm. It's very nice, it has that sort of feel that the recumbents don't ever have, as it were. Yeah. Sort of thing. And possibly even monocoques. I must admit the monocoques are very fast. I don't think, I wouldn't claim they had a, the feel. It, it isn't because steel has a spring in it, it's nothing to do with it, whatever sort of thing. Yeah. But, uh, I know this is rather robbed out and stripped down, but if you are a current roadie, then this is where your bike almost certainly came from. This okay. is the prototype of the compact road, the Giant TCR. Whoa. Because I visited Giant actually the year before I got the job, late 93, and they were discussing what they were going to do and what they, the marketing side, Giant's a very dynamic structure. Taiwan makes bicycles and Europe and America sell bicycles. Mm -hmm. So Europe and America negotiate with Taiwan to, to get bicycles made and, and haggle price and everything. Yeah. And Giant had pioneered affordable carbon fibre frames with the, the carbon tube bonded to an aluminium lug series, whatever. They were the first yeah. of the high quality affordable carbon bikes. But by the 90s, I, I mostly wanted mountain bikes anyway, but the aluminium lug was a bit dated. And this, this is the, the, the Trek OCLV principle, the moulded carbon lug glued to a tube, mm -hmm. which is not, incidentally, a monocoque bicycle, even though they claim it is. It's a diamond frame bike. It's yeah. a moulded version. Anyway. The marketing people wanted this for the road bike structures. And Taiwan was saying, well, no, we'd have to make 10 different sizes because road bikes come in 10 different sizes. And you're not selling any road bikes at the moment. You're only selling mountain bikes. So no, we're not going to do it for you, whatever sort of thing. And I, I was out there while this discussion was going on, sort of thing. So I came back and no one had said that what they wanted was the, the monocot bike you saw earlier. So I thought about it. And by then I had a 16 inch mountain bike. I've got an early Fisher, but I, I, sort of one from Richard mm -hmm. Valentine, so I had a little baby mountain bike. By then I was riding, not the blue bike, but the, the yeah. follow one, the little tiny, I had a 16 inch time trial bike. So I thought, well, why couldn't I have a 16 inch road bike? I mean, I normally ride there, that blue 23 inch ah, frame, so whatever. So what if I had a little baby frame, then the frame size wouldn't be so critical. You could have a long and you could have a nice aero seat post, because I was, I was doing aero seat post already. So that really is a useful aerodynamic. It's the only aerodynamic component that doesn't compromise on weight because you only load it sideways, or rather you don't load it sideways. That's the only way the aero weakens it. So, so we got a giant Taiwan to send me. This is one of the mountain bike frames. Uh, uh, one of these stops had been glued on the wrong way around. So it was basically scrap. They sent me this over and I built it up as a road bike. Okay. Got the aero post moulded up. Not, not this is my adjustable stem. They didn't have that. I had a regular stem, whatever, and, and forks. And I rode it into the '94. They had an annual meeting in, in Lelystad, where the, the European office is. And they didn't know it was coming. I just cycled into the hotel with basically with this bike and said, "Look, oh, they said, 
what's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, and we had a, a long discussion and I said the idea is whatever sort of thing and they mm -hmm. said maybe we only need three sizes. You know, oh, to okay. cover the whole range of normally 10 bike, mountain bike came in three sizes, whatever. Mm -hmm. The seat posts, the aero posts would come in multiple sizes and I, I'd had the idea for, and that I'd made a prototype of an adjustable stem because we wouldn't use a, we had a, a head stems by then, but only on mountain bikes. Nobody okay. would be seen dead with an A head stem on a road bike. Absolutely not. You could not fit an A head stem on a, they've all got A heads, haven't they? Yes. So what happened? No. You had to have a Chinelli 1A in my day. Okay, that was what your stem yeah. was on a road bike or yeah. a copy of it. Fashion. Anyway, so <laughs> I had a three length adjustable stem idea, seven length seat post, whatever. And the idea was you build a relationship between the customer and the dealer, which from yeah. a giant's perspective is a good thing. So you customize the bike at yeah. point of sale. Mm -hmm. So you've got three signs, so it gives you almost more choice. So yeah. you could say, okay, you can have a 16 inch frame if you're time trialing with a very long aero seat post and a longish stem. Mm -hmm. Or if you're road yeah. racing, you maybe have an 18 inch because you give a slightly tighter handling, a bit yeah, more of course, yeah. weight in the frame. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. And that took a little while to sort of get sorted out. Jan Dirksen, who was the boss of Giant Europe, then he had an aluminium one welded up quickly for him to see how it worked. He'd been a bit of a roadie in his day. Yeah. And said, yeah, fell in love with the idea. So they, they went into production. It, initially, not in carbon fibre. We thought, well, we'll start in aluminium, see if it works, as it were. Yeah. But all the seven years I was with Giant, we never actually made a carbon fibre compact rope, which was the only reason for making it in the first place. <laughs> What, what, what was their aversion to making well, it? Well, they didn't have an aversion. Just the aluminium took off so well, they didn't yeah. need it sort of thing. And we did the prototypes and that's it. And then, you know, it went from Taiwan being the people who copy to the Italians being the people who copy the Taiwanese, of course, because yeah. obviously all bikes are now compact road, as it were. Sort of. Amazing. And it was a massive success, and particularly when our agent in Spain said, would you like to sponsor the Onfe team? You know, I think I'd long look at the time, whatever. So we, yeah. we went out, I flew out there, we met Manolo Sites and the gang, whatever sort of thing. And show them the compact and explain the thinking behind it and they said yeah yeah we'll, amazing we'll, we'll go with that whatever sort of thing so that's it we were away and the comp compact became and again it, it makes it cheaper and easier there's only three sizes mm -hmm. but again if you look what's happened now no is that they, they've lost the plot whatever sort of the the, the, the the compacts have a long post but it's round no the rules yeah. don't say it has to be round it can be aero which certainly whatever sort of thing the time trial bikes have level top tubes and aero posts but little short ones where did that yeah. come from? No, this is a stupid bloody people for Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Don't understand it whenever yeah. they just no confidence or whatever sort of thing anyway. Yeah. But for a while we were giant were making very nice bicycles. Mm -hmm. Pushing the boundaries. The yeah. other little feature is here. That's a little inline adjuster, which you almost certainly have on your bike somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now that was my idea. I, I, I made up one originally for the monocoque bike because the monocoque wasn't going to have external cables, obviously yeah. it's like pylons in a national park, whatever. So you couldn't have the, the traditional on the side of the down tube stops, whatever. So this is basically, it's a, a sailing a bottle screw in reverse, whatever. Yeah. So fine. So I just made up a prototype, sent it out to Taiwan, said, right, you can use these on the bike. We were then having a discussion about compact road and the fact that when you reverse the braking for UK to Europe, mm -hmm. the cables rub on the side of the head tube. It's an yeah. annoying factor, whatever sort of thing. I said, well, you could use my little inline adjusters. Oh, what's that? And they'd forgotten about it. So anyway, it was in a drawer. I grabbed it and brought it back in. I said, it was for the MCR, the, the moulded bike. You could use it on the TCRs as well. Oh, so that's a brilliant idea. So yeah. Giant then put them out to their subcontractor. Giant make, don't make bits in house, they make frames. Mm -hmm. They were their subcontractor. He looked and thought, that's clever. Went online. No one had taken out a patent on it. <gasps> so the subcontractor took out the patent. Now, I don't get royalties anyway, whatever, but Giant don't get royalties on this. Oh, They're on no. every bloody bike in the world, okay? And <gasps> this little guy in Taiwan. Now, this is what tells you this talking of conflict with China is meaningless. They don't get into conflict. Giant didn't have a row with this guy. It's mm -hmm. fine, okay? You're going to do us a good price? Of course he is. Yeah, of course. So Giant get their ones from this guy at a much better price than everybody yeah. else in the world gets their best, and that's how the Chinese work. Okay? Yeah. But, well, all of those out there, and I don't get any royalties. It's not that galling. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, you know, you, yeah, yeah you, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Whatever sort of thing, but yeah. it's a, a world famous widget, as it were. So, yeah. Interesting. That, that, it I did that first. I did the end of bit there, which some people now use. Mm -hmm. But I abandon that because it's potentially easier to damage, and it buggers up a very expensive. Machine, brake yeah. lever, whereas that, that bit is obviously not physically connected to the brake lever sort of thing, gear combined, whatever, so it seemed a more sensible arrangement. 
But anyway, there are lots and lots of them out there. Actually, this isn't quite a production TCR. Having designed a bike that only needed three frame size and you could yeah. customize for everybody, this was actually specially made for me. <laughs> ah. this, this has the seat tube of the small, I a 16 inch, but the top tube of the medium, so uh, the slightly longer top tube, because I like a very small frame, obviously, whatever. Okay. This is a bit too extreme for most people. So this is ironically a custom version of a bike that didn't need to be custom made, whatever sort of thing. These are the production giant wheels, which are a bit of a compromise in my original designs, a little sad, not that everything works out perfectly in, in production, whatever. But this was, yeah, this is the most influential bicycle in the world. Just sort of stem, you can see clearly there's a nice two tone effect there. And I was paid the greatest compliment ever mm -hmm. by Antonio Colombo, the boss of Cinelli, right? Yeah, he said he wished he'd designed this stem. Oh, <laughs> wow. the man oh. himself <laughs> likes my stem, this is it? The man who produces the Cinelli 1A, beautiful this stem. This one's for you, Janusz. And how much did this bike weigh in the end? Was it? Oh, no, this is not a special, this is just the normal weight, whatever. Mm -hmm. I did have, we ended up, because we were then sponsoring Onfe, yeah. and the, the marketing was set a time, and look, okay, but this is race, can you make some lighter bikes? It doesn't matter if they comply with JIS standards, race yeah. anyway, whatever. so they, 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 then they do their own drawing in house, yeah. and make their own, so they drew the tube much, much thinner. Got down from the regular 1400 gram frame to 1200 grams, that's a nice way. Still passed the JIS test. You know, sort of really? like, oh, fine, okay, what, we're we doing 1,400 gram? Yeah. <laughs> 1200, okay, make them all 1,200 gram. Right, and now make some lighter ones, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, we can't draw the tubing any thinner because the, the yeah. core, the, the, so they end up getting some more belt sort of core material, special alloy they got from the States, 6013, with something a bit mm -hmm. different, really. Yeah. But they, they got down to 875 grams. No way. That got halfway through the JIS test on fatigue before it finally started failing. So that started out as sort of Jalabert was the leader, yeah. then Sunday best bike only, whatever. In the end, they all had them, they all rode them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up with one of those as well, and they really were anodized only, no paint on them, whatever sort wow. of thing. Super lightweight thing. Sounds whatever. fantastic. 875 aluminium frame. Yeah. And that was the other thing when I left Gina, seven years, very mm -hmm. successful. Like I was, you know, by default, the most famous bike designer. Yeah. We'd had this wonderful cooperation together, not transform them giant, already the biggest and best in the world, but you know, suddenly yeah. people understood they were with the compact road and everything, um, getting all the way. No one offered me a job when I left giant. Really? You would think, all these other bikes, the your hand off. most famous bike designer who's worked with yeah. giant very successfully is mm -hmm. available. Yeah. No, 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 they don't, they don't know, they don't bike design. Yeah. Color and graphics, maybe an inch or two of the top tube and pick and mix with the Shimano. Yeah, of course. Bike design. All the seven years with Giant, honestly, I don't think I met another person I could call a bike designer. Yeah. That's, that, that's the upper world. Laid back world, another matter, of course. Yeah. You know, I, I do more asking than telling in the laid back yeah. world. So I yeah. Think you left I, mean, giant. I didn't want to work anybody else, whatever, but you think someone might have. Just you know, made an offer, you know, something, something that you couldn't thing. refuse. Or then you come up with something. No, they, they don't want to know. No. It's well, it's their loss, Mike, that's for sure. Whatever it is, yes. It I was. Mean, it doesn't, I didn't want to. I don't to yeah. I mean, it's slightly frustrating because I do keep having ideas that I can't mm. use. I keep yeah. coming up with a little thing. But today, I mm. look at the bikes that are out there. No, you know, tell yeah. the hair. You know, yeah. That really shouldn't be like that. You know, yeah. you know, I, I, ideas that are on the 81 bike there mm -hmm. still aren't being used. You could put into practice, yeah, yeah. make bicycles better. And why wouldn't you want to? Yeah, we want more, especially at the moment, we want more yeah. people riding bikes. Yeah. It's about to become an NHS practice. The yeah. doctors are going to be yeah. men riding bikes for Christ's yeah. sort of thing. Even well, Boris is trying to lose weight. Well, they say Boris, <laughs> Boris is more famous for whims and policy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not holding my breath on this one, sort of thing. But, yeah. but even that, aesthetically, the castings work. Mm -hmm. I think there's something about them. They, it was the only way I could make it, but they, they do look nice at that defining point yeah. than simply a welded structure. So this is one of your, I'd say... It's a shame it's not in production anymore. Yeah. It's a shame that Bob and then Carl, it all sort of went pear-shaped, but I still don't understand why. So this is one of the uh, uh, most known designs of oh, yours? Oh yeah, it has to, the, the Speedy was the, it's obviously the, the best known, well, the, the Lotus bike, ultimately the yeah. most famous bike, but, but things I've made myself. Mm -hmm. 
it's a work of art, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. Always wanted one, never owned one. Yeah. The trick to getting in is stand in front. Mm -hmm. All wheels flop down. Ah. Short for me. Yeah, definitely be too short for me that one then. There we go. You can steer with one hand once you get used to it. The steering loads are very light once you're rolling. Ah, yes. Uh, hey, look, I've got a bigger bike than you. <laughs> and I've got more wheels. Yeah. Mike has three wheels, Theo, and you only three have two. On my wagon. Whatever. <laughs> One thing I don't think I can do is the cornery on two wheels anymore. No, no. It's a shame it's a little bit short for you, isn't it? You should be able to. Okay, do you want to. Sold worldwide. It's 500 ish, I think. Okay. Around, on, on the, on the, and uh, what year did. Uh, what year was the, I don't know. This, this is one of Bob's, but I just got sent in because there was a casting had come on glue, something like that. And you, you came up with the idea for these in, uh, well, the 80s? 80, uh, well, 80, we built the first straight like us. Uh, I share the honours of the first road going recumbent truck with George yeah. Rasmus at Denmark. He did yes. a light truck. And we discussed it the other year at the Spetsy as mm -hmm. to who was there first. And George just beats me by a head as well because he built, I think, his first one 81. Now, yeah. I built my first one 81, but that was a straight liner. It wasn't the speedy. So having got the straight liner and discovering that doing a one hour race is very different from recumbent, we then built the first speedy off the back of that. So okay. 881, 82 was the first speedy, made purely for training mm -hmm. for the original straight line to get the, the rider up to speed for the one hour race. And of course they're just so much fun, we just so, started making them. So now they, they, they started off as aluminium, then then uh, you had the magnesium obviously. And no, there were very few, was only, I, I've only made one with magnesium, Bob made it with magnesium castings, you know, okay. the, the lightweight which was fairly late on with that halved the weight of everything, thin wall tubing, aluminium, brake There's paper. never been a carbon fibre, complete carbon fibre jobby. Well, only the one that's in set, the Mark 7, that's a yes. carbon, that's the, the Mark 7 was an all-carbon chassis. Oh, ah, okay. Piece the same as the, the, the rat racer, mm -hmm. but wet layer rather than free prig. Fantastic. Up until that point, uh, the, the very nice one, which Ian Sheen ended up with, was the Mark 6, mm -hmm. and that had the highest strength aluminium, this is a sort of boring aluminium grey, they were highest strength aluminium carbon, and they were all fancy machines, so they were fancy lugs, whatever. <laughs> 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 and a lot of machining. Pimp my ride. <laughs> and that, that, was a, that was a very nice bike, the Mark 7 uh -huh. that, that, that handled. But the Mark that's, 7 was the fastest So you've just bike. got the one brake lever there. That's brakes, both both front brakes. Mm -hmm. Front changer, rear changer, and this doesn't have one, but we used to have a parking brake, a spoon brake on, on the back yeah. wheel just to stop and roll, because it's nice to roll away. Of course, yeah. Kind of sort of Number, whatever, but so this is the, the final 3A version, as it were, exactly the same as the, the ones I was producing, but just the thing is, these are tubed rather than the original one was a full casting there rather than tubes and casting. Okay, all on one lever, the brakes, yeah, lovely. Yeah, and again, that was that was that that was the only we didn't have this side lever when we first started, just had the the, the brake lever was all you had for steering. And instead of a universal joint, which this one has a proper proper U, U, nylon UJ, mm -hmm. instead of having that, we had a piece of hydraulic hose. Ah, that was okay. So you put the side hand on, yanked hard, and it all just unfolded. Yes, <laughs> <And> it <laughs> flopping around. You went yeah. straight on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would have been yeah. quite a learning curve in those days. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. The first few castings, the glue didn't work very well, so we learned about gluing properly. Uh -huh. 
Always had the drum brakes, so we've never done them with discs at the end. They're just it, 70s on there. Discs yeah. are a bit lighter and a bit more powerful. You don't really need that sort of thing. So yeah. it's a bit of a and I sort of contemplated going to discs several times in, in the year, never did. That's oh, lovely. The drums. You don't have a drum, they're, they're, they're zero maintenance. They just yeah. come on, they're, they're yeah. more than enough power. I mean, in the day you could lean forward just a tiny bit and you lifted the back wheel off the ground if you stopped really hard to wow. drop back down again. So it's enough braking power, you don't need any more. tricks we, we learned. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I'll just film around the back. Speedies, but, yeah. but this helped, I think it helped influence the whole of the HPV movement in Europe. Mm -hmm. Because it started with what's going on in the battle now today, pure speed. And then we turned it into a sport, and then once it got to Germany and, and, and the Netherlands, it sort of it became a bit of a sort of a green symbol, as it were, it became yeah. an environmental statement. But and the speed just dropped into that perfectly. You know, you, you could ride to the event, you could win a race, uh, and put some beer in the boot to bring it home, and then ride right home. Fantastic! A, a group of German lads who were actually buying sets of castings off me and mm -hmm. taking them back and having them machined up in the factory and flogging them in Germany whenever. Oh. Every time they came over to bring me a crate of wheat beer. Oh, <laughs> oh lovely. <laughs> nice. That'll do it. <laughs> it's a drink, whatever sort of thing. So. Yeah, fab machines. Yes. Lovely, thanks, Mike. Well, as always, Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure. And thanks for showing us all your d amazing machines, you which is... Uh, sure, whatever. Yeah. Well, it's nice getting it out there to people who, who haven't seen all the, the originals, you know, which is... Uh, a uh, chance in a lifetime, really. I've been planning to come up here for ages just to check everything out again and get it documented this time, which is awesome. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's great. Thank you. Thanks very much for having us. Yeah. Come on.